by no means are you disparaging or saying that the sunnah prayers are not important but it's uh, advice kind of in the context of someone who doesn't even pray and this kind of whole notion of like oftentimes the shocking thing is it comes from people who don't even pray themselves Assalamu alaikum. Wanted to make this a quick video. It's another episode of the Optimized Muslim podcast. Um, if you're into self development, and I always get this question, especially when someone finds out that you are into self development and you're a Muslim, and if they're struggling to pray or practice, they'll often ask you, um, What's the best advice? How can I start praying? Or how can I advise someone to start praying? And I have noticed through experience there is <laughs> a weird uh, difference of opinion on this. So I thought instead of just talking about it myself, I found a scholar who works with i syllabus in the uk and also other organizations and just by himself as well very knowledgeable studied abroad and the full kind of scholar checklist that people have in their minds um so he answers this question quite briefly succinctly and to the point just wanted to play the clip and then i'll comment on it inshallah so the question is how to get in this case an elderly relative to start praying but i think it applies in general to okay so here's the recording advice for an elder family member taking part in obligatory religious practices uh, wisdom um, gentleness kindness um, not badgering people not nagging people uh, gently encouraging them you know so for example um, if you go if they, if they don't pray you know you just uh, ask them when you're going to pray would you like to pray with me uh, and then when, when and if they say yes then make the prayer short don't make the prayer really really long so they're like oh my god you know make it really short so they don't feel it difficult so try and make things easy for them um you know if it's obligatory things try to um give them the minimum so, so let's let's say they don't pray okay and so isha rather than saying well you need to pray four sunnahs then you need to be four four far then you need to pray two sunnahs then you need to do nafa then you need to do 20 tarawih then you need to do better right you just basically say to them look just do your fard just do the fard and read as much tarawih as you want when you feel like what uh, you feel like if you feel like going home go home if you feel tired just go to the back of the mosque lie down listen to the quran make it easy for them make it as easy as possible for them what's the ruling on women who have so that was the recording and the reason I wanted to play that is because I've been in situations before where I've been trying to uh, answer this question and um, in the middle of answering it someone else has kind of just uh, interrupted and said no no um, the sunnah prayers are important now in answering the question in this way where you're saying look try to pray the uh, fard only by no means are you disparaging or saying that the sunnah prayers are not important but it's uh, advice kind of in the context of someone who doesn't even pray and this kind of whole notion of like oftentimes the shocking thing is it comes from people who don't even pray themselves so they haven't even successfully adopted the habit themselves but they still feel the need to kind of interrupt and say no sunnah prayers are more important or sorry sunnah prayers are important you can't miss them you pray it all or you don't pray any of it this kind of logic <clears throat> which obviously doesn't make any sense but it goes against the kind of um, the science as well if you like on how to make a habit or how to install a new action in your life because it's heavily dependent on the amount of work required the kind of activation energy required to start doing that I've got a whole video on how to make praying salah a habit and I kind of break it down but since then there's like good books out there like the um James Clear's book on habits, atomic habits, and kind of once you've read that, or even if you haven't, just intuitively you understand that by doing less at the start, it's going to be easier for people to get over that initial uh, testing period of adopting a new lifestyle change, if you do want it to be a lifestyle change. Um, so it's just a short video really, there's not any more um, that needs to be said on it but it's just that this philosophy or this way of thinking applies to when you're starting any new action start small be consistent you've got a whole life inshallah have the intention that you want to uh, keep increasing it keep improving and do it in a way where the experts and the psychologists and even like this the ulama are advising you to do it and you'll be in a much better position than just trying yourself and thinking that you have to 
um, struggle your way through it without any kind of um, logic. So that's it for this video, inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim.